Okay, what we have here is a 2006 GL1800 Goldwing, six years old, about 69,000 miles on it. And we're going to install on it today a back off wig wag brake light signal module made by Signal Dynamics. Let me open it up real quick so some of the glare is off of this and show you the front panel of it. And that's what we're going to be installing. Uh, the instructions right inside it here, really clear instructions on it. Uh, and this is designed for two uh, motorcycles with two brake lights. The actual module, and notice how easily the packaging comes apart, I love that, is a pretty small little electronic module with five wires coming out of it, four of which will actually be used. Choice between the solid red and the solid orange wires, choice between the two modes of operation. Mode one with the red wire is to emit four alternating quick wig-like, wig-wag flashes of the left and right brake lights, followed by three short flashes, and then one long flash of both brake lights, and then three short flashes and one long flash pattern will automatically repeat as long as brakes are held. The other with the orange wire mode, mode two, is that it emits four alternating wigwag flashes of each brake light, and followed by three flashes of the brake light simultaneously, and then a steady brake light until the brakes are released. I'm probably going to choose mode one, primarily because uh, of so many accidents that I hear of where a motorcycle is setting at a stop sign or a stop light, and somebody slams into the back of them, um, not noticing that they're there and they'll say well I didn't see them of course this isn't going to help if someone is texting or something like that and not even looking at the road ahead of them but if they're looking ahead hopefully this will alert them to this now it says that on uh, for Goldwing motorcycles the best place to install this module is in the trunk and only on two brake lights well uh, there's the trunk on mine and it has a run and a run break and a run and run break back here and my runs out over here and I think that should be good because it's up high more like you know a high mount and that should alert them better so that's what I'm going to do however mounting it in the trunk uh, that is pretty hard to do on this model because all the wiring for it is down here underneath the trunk right in here is where they split off to go up underneath to the two lights so it's going to be a lot easier to just splice them in down here what I've already done is cut into the wiring harness uh, cover uh, both the one for the left and the one for the right and located the green wire with the red stripe on each one of them that's the brake light wire and so those are the ones that I'm going to be hooking it up in uh, so the next thing it says to do is make sure first that your brake lights are working. So let me turn the ignition on and aim this up here so you can see the trunk. And then I'm going to uh, operate the brakes and you see the brake lights come on and then go off. The Handlebar switches on these are really sensitive and pick up really easy, just a very light pressure. So that's with the brakes off, that's with the brakes on. So you see both my brake lights are working. My run light right here is out, but I'll get to that when I get time, when I get a bolt. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is locate your brake light wire. So that's what I've done here. Um, and so it's the green wire with the red stripe and the green wire with the red stripe. This is for the right and this one is for the left. So I've slit the two bundles open there carefully and open them up. Make sure there's a blue tape wrapped bundle right here. And you want to be careful not to cut into that uh, unless you want to get into the ground because that is a ground bus there and there's a ground splice right behind that. Uh, so, next, step three, cut the wire leading to your left brake light. 
at least six inches behind the bulb. Well, we're going to be well behind that. Cap the opposite end. We will not use this wire. Connect the red wire with the white stripe to your left brake light wire. So left, this side, that's the, uh, the one coming down and the, the fat one right here. And that's the wire we want right there. Now I'm going to just, in the case of some possibility of a problem, I'm going to cut it so I could butt splice back together if I needed to. So I'm going to cut it right about there. So here's my cutter and I'm going to cut right about here. And so I could butt splice it back together if I had to. And then I'm going to splice in the red wire with the white stripe. And that's this one right here. So that one's going to be spliced in. I'm going to use a butt splice to do that uh, because I have them and I like using them. So I'm going to get that prepared and do it and then I'll be back. With you. So there we have the butt splice made. Um, you know, this is a heat shrinkable butt splice. So once I get this one and the other one made up and I've got it all tested, then I'll be shrinking down the tubing that's built into this butt splice connector so that I have a nice waterproof connection there. And then I'll be taping over to cap off these ones that we're not using. So now it's going to say... Cut the wire leading to your right brake light. That's this one at least six inches behind the bulb and then connect the white wire with the red stripe. That's this one right here to your brake light. So that'll be next. Let me go ahead and do that because it takes a minute to prepare and then do that and I'll get back with you. Now I'll go ahead and show you cutting it so you know that I'm actually cutting into my wires. So here's the wire that we're going to be doing it on. I'm going to make sure I've got enough room in here for a splice if I need it. And then this wire cutters. And then I'm going to strip it. it looks like about number 20. So I strip it. Come on. You're making me look bad. There we go. Nice and stripped. And I get one of my butt splice connectors, the heat shrinkable kind, which I have one left. And my tool uh, with these heat shrinkable butt splices, they have an indention on them. You want to make sure that indention is away from the male end of the, of the crimper. So now I put my wire up in my butt splice all the way till it bottoms out in the connector and I may have to strip a little bit more to get that. Make sure you're not just putting it up in the insulation and make sure you're stripped well so you can get all the wire up in there. There we go. And we're going to crimp it down, good and secure, tug on it, make sure that's good. And then the white wire with the red stripe, put that up in there. That's a much bigger wire. And it really has a little bit too much sticking out. and. I'm going to go ahead and trim that back just a little bit. Because I don't like the wire sticking back in the insulated part. I want the wire all up in the connector. Like that. And then, crimping tool. over up in there make sure you have your tool 
at the right place, kind of centered up in the area where the crimp is supposed to be. Squeeze down. Don't squeeze ridiculously hard because you'll cut through the insulation with the crimping tool and you can't even cut through the wire if you cut too hard. So that, that's those two connections are made. We will uh, tape these off before we get it together. and We will be taping everything back together nice and solid and putting all the harness back together and everything and taping over it uh, before we're finished. So next, let me read the instruction for the next step because then I'll probably have to do some looking around. It says, read the two mode descriptions listed at the right and choose how you would prefer your brake lights to modulate. Once you've made your decision, connect the orange or red wire to the other end from the right brake light. Well, that's the one that we just did. And so that's where I'm going to be connecting them up is right there. That's one for the right brake light. And so I'm going to connect the red wire to there with, uh, this time it's going to be with a non-shrinking butt splice connector, but I have some stuff that I can paint over it. Okay, so I'm going to get that ready and do it, and then I'll be back with you. Hi. Well, I have uh, connected the red lead here. That's the operator that tells to operate in mode 1. And I've connected the ground lead, the black lead, to a tap to one of the green wires going to the right light. And the tap that I put in there is one that I had previously. And it's a neat thing. You can you install it on the ground wire and then you plug into it uh, a spade lug basically that's tapped on to your your other wire to make a T connection there it makes a nice secure connection and they've been pretty reliable for me and the way I will insulate that and the red one is I have a product called Starbright liquid electrical tape which is really messy but it does a great job of insulation it's what kind of stuff you use on boats and things so I will glob that on and probably get it all over me and everything else and that will seal everything keep it nice and dry and then I'm going to mount the module probably right there as long as no the fender might hit there I'm going to mount it up underneath that. And this is the this is the bottom of your little well in the trunk. And so I'm going to mount it right on the bottom of that. Or maybe over here on the side of it. More than likely on the bottom of it. And that will take care of that. And then I'll button everything up. But then we got to find out, does it work? Well, I've got it hooked up. Let's test it out and see if it works. Now we're going to turn the headlights on first the key on and there we see our our running lights with this one burnt out right here and what happens when we apply the brakes I've got a rope here to turn the brakes on with we pull the brakes on and we get our wig wag and then we get a constant and then we get a periodic flash and hold, flash and hold, just like it says. And so performing just like the book says. So next thing to do is to insulate all my connections, mount it up good, and then button everything back up again. I'll be back. Here's a little hint for you on the double-sided foam tape for mounting the unit. Uh, it would be a natural thing, I think, to rip off the white uh, protective coating and stick that on the unit. But then it becomes a real hassle to get this red protective coating peeled off of it. If you peel the red protecting coating off and put that on the unit first, and I've already cleaned the bottom of my uh, box over there, now that pops right off. I slide it in underneath and press it up and it's mounted. And that is that. 
See, I've got this wire is taped up. It won't be used. And I've got all my other wires taped up, covered up. All my splices covered up and everything. I've got my Starbright electrical electric, uh, electric tape on there. Uh, liquid electrical tape on there, gooped up on everything. And now I'm going to put the rear fender cover on. Shove these connectors back up in. This boot, those that will go, just protect them a little bit better. Honor provides these nice boots and then overstuffs them. And then I'm going to take my connector here that holds everything together. We'll tie and run it down good and snug and then put my fender back on and then I'll finish up for the day okay so I'll show you it working when I'm done so now we've got everything installed and under slightly better lighting conditions slightly better control at least so let's turn the tail lights on And there they are. All lights on. I'll replace it that bulb. And now we try the brakes. Ah, there we go. Wig way. Flash, flash, hold. Flash, 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 hold. Just like advertised. So it makes a nice clean installation. And I'm happy with what I got on this. So that's the signal dynamics, back off wig wag, taillight modulator for dual brake lights on a Honda GL1800 Goldwing 2006. Hope you've enjoyed it.